All right, while well, we have so much fun with the first batch of chickens, and you got six little guys underneath their little brooder guy. Okay? We're gonna start at another seven and see how it turns out. One week old, I lifted the brooder lamp up a bit. I got them drinking out of my homemade nipple waterer. And they're starting to even develop some feathers on their wings. They're doing well. And yesterday, I started another batch of eggs. So in 20 days, we'll have another half a dozen birds if everything goes well. In a previous video, we started, Connie and Sophie started the starter plants and this is just half of them. We rotate them in and out. We still get in freezing temperatures at night. But these ones are sitting in here soaking up the sun during the day. And we started some seeds today. Our Connie started seeds, I watched. Here's, she's got her rose marked with some colorful rocks. We've got lettuce and spinach. We added more compost. We're starting to clean out the greenhouse because things seem to accumulate in here from the winter, especially with uh, renovations in the shop. We got more starters up here in the starting bin and she even planted more seeds. If we get a frost kill, we got lots of backup. Here's a, she reused this grape container and I believe there's ground cherries in that one. My plans with these little guys, we're gonna, I'd like to get three or four, maybe even five more laying hens. The roosters will butcher. So I'm gonna build a chicken tractor that I can rotate through the field and I'll put all my roosters in and uh, they can go to the deep freeze. Or of course we can just have a barbecue and the rest will add to our, uh, to our laying stock. I like to get about 15 birds. We have 10 at the moment, 14 to 15 hens would be perfect for us. And if I get any more hens than that, I'll just put them on uh, Kijiji. There'll be somebody local that can make use of them. Last night was the last full moon in April. This is probably gonna be our last hard frost until May. It's just gonna be a beautiful morning here in the Yukon. It's just cr cool and crisp this morning. Outside, it's about minus eight or nine. Here on the outside, the exterior of the bed, it's zero. Up there, it's about minus two. Against my wall, I got plus four. Four. We're slowly getting the greenhouse picked apart. Connie's planted one little section here. We're waking up our apple trees and we're working our way across the bed and things are rolling in here. It's, it's time to start planting. I haven't put any energy in as far as building a fire or anything. It's just been from natural heating, so we're going to really commit planting after the full moon. Usually we get the real hard frost on that last full moon, so be another day or so. If you can add some more in, she's working a couple of night shifts, so it'll probably be after that. We're going to be good to go. We're going to have things growing in here in no time. We were going to show what we've been working on in the garden, uh, the greenhouse. Last year we put a ton of compost underneath the soil and you can see this here on the side how it's just turned into this beautiful nice sawdusty compost and it smells great and it's so soft it's I mean it sat here all year and we haven't I didn't work at it all in the fall and I didn't work at it all in the summer super happy so I'm doing the same thing again we're gonna do a bunch of compost on the bottom cover it up and oh and Byron and I were talking about how awesome the sawdust is um, as opposed to straw because we've used straw before with our animals and things and um, it just doesn't seem to break down but the sawdust has been awesome for cutting the nitrogen yeah the straw doesn't it, it doesn't really attract the water it repels the water, doesn't absorb it and break down that we found. And we've been super happy when we got this, um, we ordered um, all this topsoil and it was quite compact. And um, so we've been really happy how it's turned out 
You just want to play in it all day. We, we'd water it and it would get uh, it would get hard like here and, and get these cracks in it. But it would be actually literally, I won't disturb that because it's, it's uh, seeded soil now. But um, you'd have a hard layer, it would be like concrete after you poured water on it, but now it's soft. So just after one year, mm -hmm. soil, it, it's, um, it totally, it's still soft and we haven't worked it at all. And things have been growing so well, it's like a jungle in here. We got a good start on this year. We got all this planted up where the rocks are marking some rows. And down here, those are stutter plants that get put inside every night. We're still freezing at night. We have three, oh, sorry, four apple trees in here. One way down there. And these are from Klondike Valley Farms in Dawson City. John from Klondike Valley stopped by and he gave me a good tune up on them and pruned them all. He said they look great. This is our second season with them. We had half a dozen apples last year. We punch, pit, punch, pinched a bunch of flowers off this guy. He was right full. And there's green buds coming. And according to him, we should get apples this year. Um, with the little buds coming in, he goes, that's an apple, that's an apple, and so on. So he says, everything looks good. We're doing well. So. It's uh, apple tree galore on this side. Plan in the future is to get these out of here. Maybe next year, move them outside. Get them in their own shelter, and then we'll put another bed in here. These drums are for thermal mass, so is the rocks. The sun shines in on them, warms them up. Actually, they feel warmed even today. And then they release the heat at night, mi mitigating the frost in, in the building. They're empty at the moment, but last year, my readings were, it, it was unreal. You'd have 10 degrees at the bottom. Between each rung, it would be 24 at the top in the evening after the sun went down. And that would be raiding back into the shop. Um, we have three drums in between the trees, so that's, that's quite a bit of thermal mass in here, plus all these rocks that we packed in. And all this was free. Um, even scavenged the paint from the dump painted them flat black that's a nice little detail when we when we do actually start planting and get seed or seedlings coming up I will fill one drum with hot water one night and then the next night I'll fill the next one and the next night I'll fill the next one and then that releases the heat back into the greenhouse over a time frame these are venting tubes uh, I've got a computer fan wired in so it's sucking the worm, that's above my head level at the moment, that tube. And it's pulling the air down underneath and underneath the bed and through the rock. It goes all the way along. Yes, we had supper in here tonight. Sit in a greenhouse in the evenings where it's nice and warm and cozy. It's so early in the spring. And there's another one at the other end. And it does the same. It pulls that warm air from the surface and pulls it underneath the bed. And there's cracks between these boards, so it, it naturally it's... Uh, release the heat back into the room or the airflow back so there's no negative pressure in the bed as such it's working fairly good i got it hooked directly to a solar panel that's against the wall here a small panel that's been broken so we kind of reuse that panel and when the sun shines the fans turn it's kind of a complemented system in that sense it's just on the other side of the wall here the detail of that tube i don't know if you can see the fan i can It's really moving air, you can feel it blowing over. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. And that's pulling all the warm air from, from the roof of the greenhouse underneath the bed, warming it up. Here's another detail I got, reflecting light off the back wall onto the plants. Scavenging mirrors from the landfill. There's a bunch of them in here. Here's a bit one with a shelf and they go all the way down to the other end of the the room every time I'm at the landfill we, we pull a mirror out of the garbage pile and strap them to the wall. The black wall absorbs heat and releases it at night also when we're, where we don't have mirrors. It's quite warm to touch which complements the, the whole system. Another detail we got is we have tin out to here and then we have clear corrugated paneling out to the edge and of course on the front wall. 
So in the Yukon, the, the sun the, the, in the fall and the spring, it's low on the horizon. And then in July, it's really high on the horizon. And that's when we have warm days regardless and lots of light that we can utilize. So what that does is it provides a lot of shade on the longest day of the year that literally where the, the bottom of the wall starts, that's where the shade is on the longest, longest day of the year. And it's above the door on the shortest day of the year in the winter, which so it's shining almost directly in. But it's a good complement to to the shade, so we don't get overheating. As we have we have that in in place. Come July, also, it's just like a jungle, so that sh that 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 uh, really mitigates a lot of heat. The, the The trees absorb a lot of radiation when they're full bloom. That's what we experienced last year. The front wall vegetation shades the, the whole place, the tomatoes and everything. So we're pretty happy with that. We use uh, this area for a kind of sitting warm area. We sit around the plants, nibble on the tomato trees, what have you. And it's, uh, it's after dinner time and it's 20 degrees in here still, middle of April. It's about four degrees outside on my back wall here. 24 degrees I'm in here literally in my bare feet right now working running around and playing <laughs>